In today's video, I'm going to be giving a care guide and a species profile on the flower horn. Flower horns are amazing cichlids that people either tend to love or hate. They have a big nuchal hump on their head. They have some vivid color and awesome patterns throughout their body. They are definitely a unique cichlid and I'm excited to talk about it today. So let's dive right in. The flower horn is one of the most unique cichlids in the hobby due to its big personality, its aggressive nature, its color patterns, and its big nuchal hump, also known as a cock. This big hump is a characteristic that makes them very polarizing in the hobby since some fish keepers either tend to love them or hate them. Flower horns are a man-made species that are hybrids from a variety of different cichlids and due to this they are not found naturally anywhere in the wild. This is another reason why some people may not like flower horns since they aren't a natural species and hybrids are sometimes frowned upon. My brothers and I really like flower horns mostly because of that aggressive, personable behavior along with the great coloration and patterns on some of them. My brother Quinn has had a short body female flower horn named Felix in his classroom for almost four years now. When he bought Felix, she was a tiny fish and we couldn't tell if she was male or female or that she was a short body. And although she's definitely not show quality like some other flower horns, she's made up for the looks with a great personality for all of Quinn's high school students to enjoy. Another thing you'll notice is that Felix does not have that signature nuchal hump since female flower horns only get a slight bump. Males get the huge bump which is mostly based on genetics and selective breeding but also is based on dominance in the tank. Flower horns are one of the most common competition cichlids out there. Events like Aquashella often have them on display and a competition is based on color, size, and shape. When entering those competitions, many owners will do something that is known as grooming. This process usually involves a mirror or a picture of another flower horn. This gets the fish fired up, often leading to vibrant color patterns and even an enlarged nuchal hump. This grooming process can be pretty stressful on the fish if it's done too often. This, along with some frequent breeding, can lead to a shortened lifespan. In a regular setting though, flower horns can live up to 10 years or longer. It is possible that some specific fish may have been inbred or crossbred too much and may also have a shortened lifespan because of that. Flower horns grow to be very large and they're one of the most aggressive cichlids in this hobby. It's really due to the types of cichlids that have been crossbred to create them. These usually include Trimax cichlids, Midas or Red Devils are common, Texas cichlids, and even some Black Nasty cichlids. Mixing these already aggressive species into one creates a really potent mix for the flower horn. And due to this hyper aggressive nature, flower horns are usually best kept alone in an aquarium. Unless you have a very large tank and get lucky with a more docile individual, your flower horn will eventually kill everything in the tank. Sometimes a male and female can be kept together, but usually a barrier or egg crate will be needed if the male becomes too aggressive. Flower horns are also aggressive towards any and all decor you put in the tank. They will usually tear up any live plants, they'll knock over driftwood, They'll move rocks, dig out pits in the substrate, you name it. So for your tank setup, we would recommend either a lightly scaped tank, maybe just with substrate and a few heavy rocks, or just to go with a bare bottom in your tank. If you're really into nicely scaped tanks, flower horns probably aren't for you. Or if you're into more of a community setting with a lot of fish in your tank, flower horns probably aren't your best choice. But for most, their incredible color, their unique shape and personality is plenty of reason to keep them. I feel like they rival Oscars with how personable they can be, following you around, begging for food, and just seeming like a puppy looking up at you. Flower horns do get very large with some males reaching up to 14, 15, even 16 inches in length and because of this they require a large tank with a 75 gallon being the minimum tank size for one large adult. Felix here is actually in a 55 gallon tank because she is both a female and short body she stays much smaller than some of the large male adults. So for her, a 55 gallon seems ideal. But for most flower horns, 75 gallons or larger is recommended. Flower horns will eat just about anything you put in the tank. I recommend a high protein based diet, so big flakes or pellets will do great, with occasional frozen foods like brine shrimp or bloodworms. We use extreme krill flakes and big fella pellets for Felix, and she's super thick now. Most flower horns like slightly higher temperatures than most cichlids, We'd recommend keeping the tank anywhere from 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. They seem to do just fine in all ranges of pH, hardness, and overall, they are a very hardy fish. 
Just make sure you have a cycled tank and keep those nitrates below 40 parts per million and they should do just fine. Since they are pretty messy eaters though and they shred up all live plants, water changes are likely going to be frequent on a tank with a flower horn. Also strong filtration and flow is recommended in a tank with a flower horn. They are messy eaters and any of that uneaten food will accumulate on the substrate if you don't have adequate flow. So we would always recommend a wave maker with a flower horn. And since temperatures might be higher in a flower horn tank, a wave maker angled upward for surface agitation or an air stone is recommended. When it comes to breeding flower horns, it is very simple. Just make sure you have a male and a female over a year old, have good water quality, and they'll usually lay eggs on a flat surface. Felix has laid eggs many times for Quinn, usually on slate rocks that he had in the tank. The males will fertilize the eggs and the fry will hatch in a few days. But overall, flower horns are one of the most unique cichlids in the hobby due to its nuchal hump and the vivid color patterns. If you're okay with having just one solo aggressive fish in a big tank with light decor, then flower horns may just be for you. They truly can be a pet fish and one that friends and family will always ask about. And although they may not be great fits for some fish keepers, we do love them and we would definitely recommend them as long as you follow the general guidelines from this video. So I hope you found that information helpful. If you have any other questions about keeping the flower horn, make sure to leave that down in the comment section below. Always happy to help. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.